friend Shannon Lou here, and my last video that I did was AFAB trans terminology. Um, so today I thought it would be important to do AMAB trans terminology. Quick disclaimer I am an AFAB person. AMAB means assigned male at birth, and as a person who was not assigned male at birth, I haven't been directly exposed to the things that I'm about to talk about. But I've done my research, I'm pretty confident that what I'm going to teach you all today is correct information. I'm just worried that I might end up leaving something out. So if I do, and there are any AMAB transgender people out there watching this video, please, please, please comment down below. And if there are any corrections or anything, um, I will leave all of that in the description down below. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is what exactly AMAB even means. So, like AFAB means assigned female at birth, AMAB means assigned male at birth. Quick comment though, you don't use these terms to describe a trans woman or a trans man. You would call a trans man a trans man, you wouldn't call him AFAB, like you would call a trans woman a trans woman, you wouldn't call her AMAB. So it's not to uh, discredit someone's identity, they are only used for purposes such as when they are relevant, like giving resources and terminology like I'm about to do now. The next thing that I want to talk about that's really important that has to do with AMAB transgender terminology is the AFAB privilege. So I do actually personally um, know what this is as an AFAB person, um, the AFAB privilege is basically the concept that AFAB people are generally more, have more representation in media than AMAB people. And so I will link you down below to some of my favorite YouTubers who just happen to be AMAB. There are many more cases of representation online for AFAB people, just like there's a lot more um, known resources for AFAB people than there are for AMAB people, which is why I am honored to be able to make this video for you. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is what exactly tucking is. So there are two tubes within the person's body um, near the pelvis where the testicles can retract back into the body and then the penis can be pushed backwards and lay flat. So tucking is that process where you where a person would make their penis lay flatter so that they um, would not have a bulge in their crotch area. And there are clothing articles that can help with this and one such thing is called the gaff. I have seen this be described as a binder for AMAB people. Basically once someone is tucking and they have their penis laid flat the gaff would um, come up and they basically apply pressure to keep the penis laying flat so that the bulge will not appear. The next thing that I want to talk about are called breast forms. Basically what these are are um, prosthetics that someone can wear on the chest or even just cloths that have um, shape to them so that they give the definition of breasts for someone who does not yet have clearly defined breasts. The breast forms that I have seen almost look like the bathing suits that just stop right here and wrap around your chest that way. And they have either cotton inside them, they can either be prosthetics, anything like that. There are also different types of bras that one person may be able to wear, where they have like push-up bras that have extra padding on the bottom side of the bra so that it will push the breast tissue up more to appear that the breasts are larger. The next thing that I want to talk about is the way that estrogen would be taken. So estrogen is the hormone that enhances the female characteristics of a person. And so like what estrogen would do would make the shoulders appear less broad and it changes the texture of the skin to make it smoother as well as changing the jaw shape and general facial structure of a person as well as moving muscle more towards the thighs and the stomach rather than um, towards the sides of a person's body and also help in developing the breast tissue as a more sensitive tissue. Estrogen can be taken as a pill and there are different levels at which estrogen can be taken like different 
dosages. Now I would like to talk about the surgical aspects. So just like I did a component about uh, different types of surgeries with the AFAB trans terminology, I would also like to state that with the AMAB trans uh, terminology video, these surgeries are of course um, not mandatory for anybody's transition and they don't uh, and not getting one of these surgeries doesn't discredit someone's identity in any way shape or form but these are just options and I will just hopefully try to explain as best that I can what exactly they are um, in as little detail as possible so as to not um, get too graphic <laughs> So one of the very first things that I want to talk about is a breast augmentation. Obviously what this is is silicone is placed into the breast cavity to make the breasts more defined as well as larger. The next surgery that I want to talk about is the voice feminization surgery, which is a surgery that take, takes place in the, um, the throat area in the neck. So pitch is just the frequency at which the slits in our vocal cords and the larynx at which they vibrate and let air pass. So what this surgery does is it does not change the size and the shape of this area. So it doesn't change the resonators that help create your voice. So what the voice feminization surgery does is it shortens the length of the vocal cords to allow for less air to pass through which would result in a higher pitched, more feminine sounding type voice. So the last two surgeries that I want to talk about are the vaginoplasty and the labiaplasty. So basically these two surgeries typically go together, the vaginoplasty coming first and then later on coming the second surgery. It essentially converts the tissues of the penis and the scrotum into a vagina, a clitoris, and labia. So that procedure is what would come first and then it is later typically accompanied with the labiaplasty which is um, just to refine what the labia would look like and the external vaginal area. I hope that this video was uh, informative and I hope it helped you learn a little bit about AMAB trans terminology. Like I said, if there's anything that I left out that any AMAB transgender people out there would like uh, for everyone to know, please comment it down below and I will see your comments. I will uh, uh, include the information in the description, so please keep on the lookout for the description in case it changes. And I will see you all next week. Um, I just have really quick, huge information. I'm graduating high school this week and I'm getting my very first tattoo this week. Um, so my next video is going to be a vlog about my tattoo. There's not actually going to be much of the tattooing itself because I know that people can be squeamish towards blood and I don't want to show anything like graphic like that on this channel. Um, so it, it won't be a detailed video about tattooing. And I will see you then. Bye! There are half binders, which is like the one that I have which just stop at the end of the breast tissue in the middle-ish area of the ribs and then